Ahoy, and good evening. This is the news. An elementary school janitor in New Jersey was arrested after he posted a video of himself masturbating on utensils and food that was later served to children. Wow. Two things are certain. That man will go to prison, and the school's Salisbury steak will no longer be served with gravy. No change there. Uh, this past weekend, a California serial killer says he murdered his, I don't know if I can say this on YouTube, child rapist cellmate because he had bad hygiene. When asked to describe the odor, the serial killer said it smelled like teen spirit. <laughs> Two transgender bicyclists finished first and second in this year's women's championships. As biological males, this is the only cycle they'll ever experience. Wow. Indeed. And welcome <laughs> to Normal World. I'm Dave Landau. I'm Quarter Black Garrett. I'm excited today. Yeah, and we, we have uh, Mangela's back. Thank you. How was your date with Derek? Yeah, how was that? You guys well, went out and you just weren't here yesterday. Right. It was wonderful, magical, but then I had a medical malpractice thing. You know, you're supposed Wait, to let it set in for a little bit. Malfunction? Malfunction. Yes. It fell off. Oh. oh. It. Ah. Mm -hmm. So the. But I s put it back on. I'm here today. I'm very happy. Dude. Beautiful and brave. Yeah. Well, brave. That, that is malpractice, and I mm -hmm. would yes. sue. It shouldn't just fall off. It's true. All willy-nilly well, like that. They should give you the directions <laughs> and let you know it's supposed to set in a couple of days before yeah. you get furious. Yeah, you can't use it. <laughs> Today we have uh, one of my good friends, uh, the entertainer, the internet personality, the all-around uh, uh, soy Jesus, Adam Krigler of The Krigler Show. You know, I didn't really know. It, whenever anyone asks me what I am or what I do, I, I don't have any idea. So thank you for, for taking that. Well, for there me. you go. Thanks, it's bro, for coming on. Here, I've been watching the show since the start, and it's been fantastic. So uh, it's a pleasure. Yeah, I appreciate you, you man. Finally. You're always championing the show. So. Well, yeah, thank you very much for joining us. We really do appreciate it. Well, I feel like I fit in perfectly. You know, look, look at us. We're, we're three guys formerly on other shows. Yes. Where yeah. We, <laughs> we have a kinship, I think, no, maybe. Yeah. You know, yeah. Feel like Around us, yeah. We, we all share a bond here. Yeah. It's called trauma. That's it. That is yeah. it. Yeah, on this exactly. side. I mean, of course, Damn. kidding. That was from years ago, a different show I was on. Yes. Oh, like, oh, right. Sorry to bring shows. that up. The horse. Oh. Whoa. Oh, what? It's not, I don't want to talk about huh? it. Hands? It was Horsey the Clown Show. Yeah, it was the Dr. <laughs> Hand Show. Ooh. Boy, oh boy. Could he not keep that thing out of there? Hey, David, how are you doing with your DUIs? You, you, you know, I've been pretty good with my DUIs. I have not had one in 19 years. That's awesome. But wish I could say the same for this girl. What's going on? Nothing. Why are you driving in the wrong way of traffic? No, I just got changed around. I just moved here like two months ago. Okay. I just got changed around. Like, okay. Change Do you around. understand what's going on though? Yes. You're, you're going into oncoming London. traffic. <laughs> I know. And I just decided that it was better just to turn around really f quick. So, okay. But I'm sorry. Just to drive really in the really wrong side. I social anxiety and stuff. I get you. I don't want to step out whenever you're asking for stuff okay well we're past that Let's just go ahead and step out as an indigenous person <laughs> all right elizabeth warren <laughs> okay right back here please miss perry am i well i'm non-binary so oh okay. man strike one <laughs> what do you go by the fact that he Sky. didn't just grab Talking his pepper spray okay. just then okay. shows an immense hey, amount of restraint uh, how well, much have you uh, consumed tonight this is mr nightstick i need to run you through some tests right now stand facing me please but i just want you to know that i also have very bad social anxiety you and me both <laughs> cop is so perfect nice response. any recent perfect head response. trauma so nice. traumatic brain injuries <laughs> anything i need to know about uh mental yes <laughs> Oh my gosh. Focus on my finger, please. I am. I can't. You're just like trying to intimidate me. I don't know how I'm trying to do that. No, this it's the called test. the field sobriety as test, man. I'm an indigenous person and there's a so bunch of shit going around. I'm sorry, but it's just for me to be on my toes. I get you. you it's hard that for that natives. Yeah. I'm non binary. Yeah, I'll try my hardest. Did I mention I was non-binary? I'll non -binary. refer to you as Kai, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. I need to know if you have any injuries or anything that would prevent you from doing a standard walk or a turn tonight. Mental health. <laughs> Mental. Um, any physical injuries? <laughs> Mental injuries can prevent me from walking straight. 
Ah, uh, I get depressed. Okay. I get you. What else you want? Now with your right foot, place it in front of your left in a heel to toe touching manner. I don't identify my side, feet. Just like this, ma'am. Can you not call me ma'am, please? I'm trying my hardest. That's strike two. Okay, yeah, that's... Okay. It means a lot to me. I'm trying my hardest. Like that's it's when you pull out rubber bullets. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of triggering. <laughs> yeah. Right foot in front the of your left. bag. Nope, go back. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just go straight to the night stick. This week. <laughs> I apologize. Let's see if we can move right. forward from it. You he have couldn't be more polite. It's three. Yeah, he's so nice. Was this your experience with police officers? No. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, with generational trauma and PTSD around white people and cops. Oh my. Like, uh, white people, that's a problem. It's not your drinking. Yeah. I'm going to speak with you right over here, okay? No. Yes, ma'am. Generational trauma. Go ahead and place your hands behind your back. Cops, don't. Dude, don't. Make don't. It hard. I don't Please. know. Don't binary. make it hard. <laughs> no. Here. You're going to get a resist. <laughs> Dude, I. Bro. All of the, all of the checkboxes have don't. been checked. Yes. Don't resist. Yeah. Don't. Yeah, she's like, me. dude, I would be like, don't I don't resist. identify don't. as that. Don't. You're being a white man and. <laughs> you're being a white man. <laughs> I followed all the You're being right. a white man. <laughs> I, I, I washed all my black face <laughs> off before you I stopped guys. you. You guys. <laughs> it was so Being I, a white this, man. You're being a white man right now. I, I'm being a police officer and you're drinking and driving. On the wrong side of the road. I, I just was, I decided to turn around. I was. I got looped around. No, I can tell. Yeah, good job. That's a problem, The though. amount of, of leftists out there that are truly spoiled and entitled and have no idea what it's like to live in reality. I mean, this is just a clear-cut case of someone yeah. who's living in La La Land. It's, it's yeah. nonstop with these people. She's like, that's... how many cards can I pull out before you let me go? Huh? Mm -hmm. well, and that's what's so odd is she's obviously gotten away with everything her whole life. So she's on this victim side. So she's never actually been a victim. Mm -hmm. Now she's in a situation where she's a victimizer because it's like <laughs> if you kill someone on the road, it's your fault. He's trying to prevent that from happening. Yeah. And she doesn't know how to take it other than you're being a white man right now. In the nicest way possible. Also, who are you drinking with? Like, do you have friends with this attitude? They're also like, oh, you're being a little white there. Yeah. You're white passing. Yeah, you're intimidating me with your finger that I can't follow. <laughs> <laughs> the fingers that are out there. I this am way. following your finger. I uh, am. I am. Oh, God. Why does it have to be a straight <laughs> line? Why isn't it a gay line? <laughs> She, it should arc like a rainbow. Uh, <laughs> I don't identify as walking able. Okay, so I love you. I don't appreciate it. Just that they prevent you from walking. Trauma. Okay, okay. explain. Generational Late. trauma. <laughs> yeah, yeah, generational trauma. Oh, you mean the kind that wouldn't affect walking whatsoever? So no. Yeah. My great grandfather had polio. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get vaccinated. Why I drink the fire water? <laughs> I was, and yeah, I have. I'm sure there's a, a recording a cop could send me, but it's like <laughs> I've definitely had it where it's like, do you have any uh, injuries that prevent you from walking uh, a straight line? I'm like, oh yeah, right knee, because I do. I have like rods in them. Oof. I was like, really? I go, yep, both of them. He goes, you have rods in both of them? I'm like, yep, both knees got all these rods. It's going to make it real hard. <laughs> and I'm just lying, and it's all in the police report. <laughs> just like wow. right to it, it, like that's silent. The, at least that's, I don't know why she didn't just identify as British. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That would have made more sense. Yeah, she started doing yeah. an accent oh, or something. I'm British. Yeah, if you're just going to make up a role, you're like, oh, so I just was driving on the proper side of the road to me. Yeah. I don't know. They would have been like, oh, I get do it. Over here. It's a rental car. Confuses me. You're not an idiot. <laughs> hey, uh, if you guys don't know, me and me and the Criggs, we actually do a show on Sundays called Forbidden Frontier, where we talk sure. about all kinds of stuff, ancient uh, apocalypses, aliens, Bigfoot, all kinds of things. So sure. I wanted to get yeah. a little taste aliens. of that, just to give you mm. a little you know, primer before Sunday, Ooh. if you can go watch that later. Uh, we're gonna was that talk. a puff or was that like that, a chef's That was a little puff. That's a little puff. Little, okay. All right. Was it a chef's right. puff? It was a chef's puff. Chef's, chef's, puff. chef's puff. There you go. Uh, like we're going to talk about David Grush today and uh, his mm. whistleblowing of uh, the uh, aliens. Basically, he, he came from the military and uh, actually kind of did a, a whistleblow on all of the 
UAP and UFO projects yeah. that they have in the... Served for 14 years yeah. as an intelligence officer. Uh, for the very yeah, major, I got a whole, I got a whole list, list here. So, oh, you, alrighty. Uh, here we go. Uh, whistleblower, U, UFO whistleblower, which is technically not true because he did get all of this approved by the Pentagon. So, not technically a whistleblower. Uh, they they are okay with him saying this stuff. Uh, served 14 years as the intelligence officer and a major in the U.S. Air Force. Served from 2001 to 2023. Okay, oh, wait, 2021 to 2023 at the Naval. Geospatial Intelligence <laughs> Agency <laughs> at the this is the, this is the important part at the GS-15 level civilian level which is the equivalent of a military full bird colonel now i don't know what those words mean sanders bird, uh, <laughs> bird and colonel if it's a colonel bird is he whistleblowing on the 11 herbs and spices i you should hope not mm. they'll kill a mofo i don't know about that uh, testified before Congress in July about the UFO. Uh, basically, his story is he's an intelligent officer. He's actually supposed to be investigating this kind of stuff. And when he started asking questions, he got all this pushback from uh, these different compartments. Because the, the entire uh, UFO scenario in the government is compartmentalized. So there's different areas that know parts of the story, but not all of the story, according to Grush. Um, so he went in front of Congress and he hinted on Joe Rogan, uh, that he may have spoken to Obama about UFOs. Oh, do we have a clip for that? Oh, yeah. Ooh. Ooh, cool. That's clip. Number Are we one. alone? Well, the answer is we're not alone. And I know that with a hundred percent certainty, which as an Intel officer, you never say hundred percent, but all things pointed towards, uh, based on the people I talk to, like Harry Reid, and I use him as an example, but I talk to the highest of the high people you could possibly talk to if you catch my drift. So, When it comes to aliens, uh, there's some things I just can't tell you uh, on air. He is an Unless alien. all of them are lying and they're covering up something else, which I don't even know what it would be at this point, because the phenomenon is real. Are we alone? That's, that's what I wanted to ask you, Adam. What, what do you think? Because we've gotten into it a little bit. We we went over it when they had the congressional meeting. We talked about it yeah. a little bit on there. But I want to see what you think now. Well, I've had uh, a few different people that we both respect, like uh, Jimmy Corsetti mm -hmm. uh, and a couple a couple others in, in the circle of ufology, I guess. And they are now coming out and saying, Grush seems pretty legit at this point. And I'm like, all right. Everyone seemingly is jumping on the the grush, uh, is telling the truth bandwagon, and yeah. I'm like, all right, that that's pretty interesting. Uh, it feels like they're building up to to just get more funding from the federal government mm. or from the taxpayers. I think that's the bottom line of all of this. If it's true or not, I, I think that's their end goal. They just want to either maintain the funding that they already are getting or increase their funding uh, for whatever programs that they're running and this is when you listen to the congressional hearing that he was in with the the i think it was two other pilots that had right. were you know veterans essentially and they were saying like we saw this stuff and we can't do anything about it there was this underlying conversation that all of them were talking about how we couldn't do anything about it if they did Mm. show up to do something like, right sli like fe like you know planting the seed of fear of of like independence day right you know i'm like all right well that's kind of obvious you just want more funding whether or not it's true or not they haven't proven anything look i want to see an alien i want to see a crap not this mexico stuff uh yeah well, it's he, he already been disproven though once right it, yeah, yeah exactly and then, then the guy who comes back with it is also like hey remember how i brought the wrong <laughs> yeah. thing there was like right. a you know i found babies. more yeah it was like a uh, yeah absolutely that's what i was going to ask you about as well is what you thought about that because they keep saying ufos but we've seen absolutely no real proof right. of it right well the guy who who brought that to the mexican government was proven to have had hoaxes before you're right uh year, yes. years and years for like a decade this guy has been trying to like push these hoaxes and then it's been disproven and now he's the source of these new like amazing alien bodies it's like no i'm sorry i don't believe you anymore you know it's the guy who cried 
Sorbu in, instead of Wolf. But, um, <laughs> right. you know, I, I, I need to see this technology. I, I think yeah. that they have some sort of technology, whether it's from us, from the ancient past or an alien or some sort of anti-gravity tech uh, tech that we don't Something. understand that we're still trying to reverse engineer like Bob Lazar has mm -hmm. claimed for many, many years that they have uh, down in S4 that he said there was nine or ten crafts that he couldn't even physically touch because they were trying to reverse engineer whatever tech that they they had. Uh, I think they have it. I don't know what the source is, yeah. but I want to see it. I, I need to see it. I need to. I need to see these alien bodies. I, I'm no longer just going to trust anyone from the government. So, Grush, uh, great, cool. I'm glad that the government's trying to, you know, or some people in the government are trying to expose it. Good. I, I, I like that. But l give it all to us or shut up. Yeah, uh, or you stop know, at this talking. Because it, it's yeah. not like David Grush has said anything new. Like you mentioned, Bob Lazar, he basically mm -hmm. just conf like said what Bob Lazar had already said. said exactly. Area 51, we have ships of technology of some kind. There was possibly biologics. Uh, he mentions that they had biological bodies. I don't think Bob said Bob Lazar has well, ever... He didn't say that they I were haven't biologics. heard him say anything about bodies, but, but you he know, did Grush say is that basically he, claiming they've got bodies. Yes. And it's like, that's pretty amazing. Show yeah. it. Yeah, Show I, it to us. That's then. the part I don't understand. If you're willing to admit there's UFOs, which is obviously going to instill right. panic into anybody that's going to be the problem, mm -hmm. why not right. show what you actually have? Like, why say we have this? You know, and, and I mean, it's been announced and then not have anything to back it up with. Yeah. It just, it logically, it makes no sense to, well, to, here's to me why whatsoever. They don't call them UFOs anymore. Why? They call them UAPs. Right. You know, it's, not, it's not extraterrestrial. So what does that mean? Bob Lazar claims that one of the ships that he was working on was found in an archaeological dig. What does that mean? Right. If that's true, I'm not saying it is true. I'm mm -hmm. just saying that's very interesting that he would say that it would, you know, for me, it'd be like, if that's true, they found it from somewhere in the past. Some other technology uh, from another civilization. Was it Atlantis? I don't know. Does it go even further back? I mean, every single thing they find, they just found this structure that's, how old is it? 500,000 years old? I think it was in 250. Africa? Maybe we might be talking about a different one, but it's almost like every, every week or every month, there's a new yep. discovery that pushes the timeline of human mm -hmm. civilization back massive right. numbers of years like 200,000 years is insane to have a culture that can build m massive cities they were just talking right. about the, this uh, native city that they found in uh, North America that could host 40,000 people and there wasn't a, a city and this was uh, I want to say like a thousand years ago so I'm like in that range like a thousand to uh, a thousand 600 and there was no city in western culture or uh, until the 1800s that could house 40,000 people in a city it's massive wow. and then talk about all the stuff that uh, another one of our colleagues in our area uh luke caverns he's going down to like the yucatan peninsula he's down there right now he's down there right now yeah. exploring he's, all of that stuff and there's recording like recording himself on top of pyramids and that was not even that cool. long ago but well, uh, then you have parts yeah, with the pyramids, line. though, and then other parts of the same continent that they're building helicopters out of popsicle sticks and old cans. <laughs> so it's like, I, I don't know, like, when did the Balance. technology exist? You know, it, it just yeah. seems kind right. of strange that they're... So Grush, he claims that it's interdimensional. Yeah, he actually, he said, uh, well, yeah, let's, yeah, that's a good point. Let's, let's take a look and see what he said. Yeah, he says, yeah, interdimensional beings. Let's take a look. In terms of... Uh, multi-dimensionality, that kind of thing. The, the framework uh, that I'm familiar with, for example, is something called the holographic principle. Uh, both, uh, it's, it derives itself from general relativity and uh, quantum mechanics. And that is, if you want to imagine uh, 3D objects such as yourself casting a shadow onto a 2D surface, uh, that's the holographic principle. So you can be projected, quasi-projected from higher dimensional space to lower dimensional. It's a scientific trope that you can actually cross, literally, as far as I understand, but there's probably guys with PhDs that we could probably but, argue about that. But you have yeah. not seen any documentation that that's what's occurring. Uh, only a theoretical framework discussion. Yeah. So he's only talked to people that's that say... That's the only way that we could. 
That's the only way that yeah. we actually could discuss it is theoretically, because what he's referencing is it, it, we can only look down in dimensions. We can't look up in dimensions, right? A 2D uh, existence couldn't look at us and understand Mm -hmm. what we are all they would see is the shadow that's what he's talking about is the shadow so someone who's at a higher dimension looking at us is going oh look at these these lower dimension creatures like i feel bad that they can't experience what we experience like we as in our existence we can't comprehend that you know but when you when you find out about like quantum entanglement right or or when you stop observing um the I forget what, what the is the particles. Um, um, I forgot what the, the particles. The, right. the test is when Me they in shoot. The shower. Ooh. They yeah. shoot. They they did the <laughs> the the test where they they when they observe particles, the particle mm -hmm. properties change. So they go from a wave yeah. to a dispersed, depending so on random. if you're viewing it, and it can do it. Or if it a camera it in the is past. viewing it, or if a camera, yeah, if anything it's is observing it, anything. it can it right. changes, which is that's crazy. Insane. So I, I think that's a connection to some higher dimension that we don't uh, I was watching that it. we cannot comprehend. So that's you, what you it sent seems that video. Like dimensional, right? Like as opposed to aliens, where it is a mm -hmm. lot of sort of a time traveler or a understanding of the way time moves. Yeah. In 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 a well, different time dimension. wouldn't exist. Time wouldn't exist right. in that higher in that dimension. Other dimension. Yeah. They okay. would be able to see all of time in our dimension. I mean, it's hard to th there's a even lot of those interesting that. things about right. The, right? the reality we live in that that keep us from seeing the the matrix behind what makes us, right? So mm -hmm. you sent a, a great video in our, our, our secret Discord uh, about how they how they measure the speed of light and how we've never yeah. actually measured the speed of light because we've only measured right. it going both two ways. So two, two ways. Going yeah. to exactly. something and then coming back. Well, yeah, because it's, right. a, it's a distance, not, right. a, not a speed, which most people, well, I shouldn't say most well, people, the, but a lot of people don't even realize that. Yeah, what is that? Because you couldn't, you can't say, okay, like, hit the light and then there's a timer somewhere else uh, and then see how long it takes to get to that timer, right? Right. You can't do that because in space time, it's relative. So it would change. So the only way that they do measure it is by hitting that and then coming back and then taking that number and going, okay, well, it takes, you know, fractions of a second. And then we cut that in half and say, that's as, that's as fast as the speed of light. But what if that yeah. is not? What if it instantaneously gets there and then takes that much time to get back or vice versa? So we never actually know what it really is. So you have that, you have the particles, when you observe them, they change. So there's a lot of those weird things about uh, our universe that keeps us from knowing it. And what's Project yeah. Bluebeam? Because a lot of people are saying this is like, this seems like the... Reminiscent of it? Oh, yeah. The, where's the where's the tinfoil hat? We can put that you on. got it. I Project little... Bluebeam was actually last I need, night. Do I have my tinfoil? <laughs> I don't have my tinfoil. Reattachment <laughs> surgery. It goes deep on this. So this is NASA... <laughs> Sorry. Really I, proud of you, by the way. Thank you. Really yeah. proud of you. It I don't know this one better. too much. Uh, so NASA, it's basically Bluebeam. like the New World Order... NASA's part of that. It's trying to set up. So it's setting up different scenarios that kind of get humanity into a position where they go, okay, well, we have this other, kind of like what Adam was saying. So we have this external threat so we can kind of galvanize together and become the, the world together. So you get, you get rid of the family, you get rid of religions, you get rid of all of this stuff. So it's, it's just us together all under the one new world order when they create kind of like if you ever read or watched the movie Watchmen. Yeah, of course. The end of that movie is about uh, Dr. Manhattan either, you know, whichever way you want to. I'm very but, familiar with the character because I, I feel uh, very similar to him a lot. Oh, just without the radioactive. genius level <laughs> radioactive and I'm not blue and naked, just aloof mm. and distant to the earth. Uh, I don't care about these things. <laughs> just the one, just that part. So the end of that, that book is the intelligence about, basically creating a false flag to galvanize everybody back together. So because he believed that that is the, the way to fix everything and to get everybody on the same page is creating this giant alien that destroys the New York. Okay. And then it makes everybody kind of get together. So that's kind of, I think that's the... So it's an artificial second beam. coming? Basically, yeah. You kind of replace that with, uh, with God. And you go, oh, this is, this is now God. So communism, but uh, yeah. actually trying it, because it's never really it's been It's never tried, been tried. Right? 
So it's sort of, like, but yeah, but it does. It abolishes like all sort of Christian or whatever religious mm -hmm. values and then replaces them with a, I don't know, like a government. A, yeah, one world cult or whatever you might want to. Government is a better word oh, for that. Go. One yeah, word cult. Exactly. Yes, spot on. <laughs> well, in some of this, we actually found there's, um, what was it, the, the Washington Post posted about this. And uh, it's actually been said that they tried to do this, well, as in theory, as like a plan. Like, what if we did this? What if we projected a giant hologram of Allah in Afghanistan and then told them to sue for peace or fight these specific well, Who's going to draw it? That was an Dark episode of Punked. What? That was an episode of Punk. Yeah, Ashton Kutcher came out and was like, gotcha! <laughs> <laughs> they cut his head off. <laughs> they have that technology where they can they can whisper into people's minds, right? They they project the sound right into your into your because vibrations uh, is, is you know there's those new headphones that actually just vibrate the bone or yeah. something and you can hear them. Well, mm -hmm. they have those directional devices. Yeah, it helps with deaf they could people. Just, yeah, they could just yeah. send uh, a message into someone's brain and be like, uh, "God wants you to go. Uh, you, your 72 versions are waiting. Go do." X just then. like real genius. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's like that. This is God mm -hmm. speaking. Stop killing so each every other. Every time I every time I hear, oh yeah, uh they they were on our radar. <sighs> I'm like mm. you mean every on time there's a every shooting time? or anything happens? I mean yeah. fill in the blank. You know. You know, whatever sure. you want to say. Whatever you want to name I, it. This, there's tinfoil under this beanie. You can't <laughs> yeah. see it, but there's tinfoil under there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, you, you could yeah. make it out of the papers of uh, where they say we had information on this guy. <laughs> you could make exactly. a you could make a tinfoil exactly. house. True. But it's yeah. It's pretty. Uh, so I mean, do you think I'm there's? <laughs> but I think there is some truth to that. Like, if you do want to control a large group of people, if it is completely fake, you haven't seen these aliens, right? Wouldn't the best right. thing to do be to create that sort of large religion or whatever it was that worldwide identity mm -hmm. to kind of scare everybody into believing that something is that, that was that's always been mine because I I go from the the idea that I believe that there is there's life out in the universe. There's just the so mathematical. I. Same. probability of there not being is insane to me and uh if that's true then hey that's true then we're super special but i think that there probably is going to be more life out there are we gonna see it does it on the timeline of the universe the massive timeline that it is once you zoom out is there another culture that could create that, that could create space travel that could get to us and why would they do that and at the same time that we are, you know, like you, What's you're going to miss travel? each other. Defi define space or travel. Space and time. Yeah. I don't, it could be right. dimensional travel, right? Uh, I don't well, know if, we if can that's, fold space. that's possible. If you can, if you can fold space, we can go anywhere. Right. And, and that's, that's one of the, the like warp, warp drive or whatever, warp speed or, you know, really it's just taking that point and folding it here so we could just step right. through like a portal and be there. Uh, obviously, that's crazy, but that's science fiction. I mean, the the cell phone was uh, invented by a, a Star Trek pager on their yeah. chest, you know, and and uh, things evolved from that. But who knows? Like with quantum entanglement, like we're we're realizing that we can actually affect something that's anywhere in, in Andromeda, in the Andromeda right. galaxy. If we have two connected things, we can instantaneously change it from one to a, a zero. Right. And it's like what's built on ones and zeros? All computing. Yeah. Right. I mean, we're, we're I feel like we're infants in this next evolution of where we're at. And then with the Internet and uh, with the A.I., I mean, and then Neuralink, where we're actually being linked up. I, I mean, that's a whole other conversation. But yeah, I, I do feel like we're, we're on the we're on the brink of changing uh, humanity, which is it's scary and exciting at the same time. Technologically, know? we're like toddlers right now trying to learn yeah, how. Yeah. Fast. Even with social yeah, media, we, we, we talked about this on Bay Staff Monday. Go watch it on Adam's channel. Uh, yeah. Basically, um, cultural social media literacy is. Of course. We are still as a culture and as a as human race trying to figure out the best way to use social media. Well, think we've never been time, this connected. Think of the timeline of of the existence of man. Exactly. It's we're 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 at the very in, very infancy of all of this. Right. 
it just popped up that we could I mean, of get an instant vision, let alone You're, anything else. Adam is in Sweden right now, and we're talking to him on a show in Texas. That is insane. True. Right? Yeah. And it is it, pretty cool. Just a hundred years ago, it was like you could it's like telegrams. That's that's probably well, and the best you got. Funny enough, Tesla said a hundred years ago that this was gonna be the case. He said that we're gonna be able to talk to anyone face to face anywhere on this planet. And here we are, just as you said, 100 years later, doing exactly that. It's amazing. Like, that man was ahead of his time. And, oh, yeah. Uh, it's a shame he wasn't listened to. So we're just learning these things, and we're trying no, to Thomas cope with Edison this Thomas Edison just that. stole his idea, and he ben, died <coughs> penniless. Yeah, stole his Damn you, J.P. Morgan. That's how you know he's J. a good guy. J.P. Morgan shed on him, too. Yep. Oh, dude, he did. That was so messed up. That's yeah. a whole scandal. That's some tea right free there. Free energy, you man. No, nope. they can't sell free energy. It's, uh, they got to be able to sell it to you. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Well, like if so, let's say this happens that like I have a cousin who uh, is a certified genius, and like she, she explained time travel to me one day, and the only way that it would be possible that they thought, or, or in like one of the ways it would be possible, and it was all done through time, and explaining it in a way of you could figure out this timeline to realize time doesn't exist, but on this planet it does. Yeah. And halfway through, I was like, have we met? Like, stop it. <laughs> but there seems to be like this way, like you said. And and if there is a way that anybody can ever figure out the control of that, because there are intelligent enough people on this planet that have a, the ability to kind of try to work something out. Yeah. I mean, what does that do? Does that shut down uh, like national identities, national pride, that sort of thing where... It, it like it, it, I can't imagine it unifying people, but I can imagine it enslaving them. I mean, as, yeah. as weird as that sounds, I just I can't imagine coming up with this technology and the way that they're introducing it, using it for anything positive because nothing ever is. Right. It's well, always the elites, you know, would control and, it. And I think that's right. it's human nature to make it mm -hmm. to make it evil, to make right. it negative. Like social media, it could be a super positive thing, but I think well, because we're humans. It, you're right, it is. It is. It's definitely like that's how I know you. That's how I know Dave. Like right now, uh, right. Like right now, it's a double-edged sword. So exactly, how do we back to the thing I was saying? Is like how do we cope with using this new technology? And now on top of that, we've got AI. We've got space travel coming out. Like Elon's trying to get to Mars. We're trying to get to the moon again. Like right. all of these things, all at the same time. It's it's wild. And then they're trying to possibly, according to to uh, some people fabricate this the scenario of extraterrestrial extra dimensional people coming in so we have that target to go after i don't know there's like so many things going on right now well there's also <laughs> it's something wild. that dave dave just said reminded me of this conspiracy or not even it's just a theory that what if there is this international or excuse me interspace committee of life forms that are looking at earth and going you guys kill each other a lot um we're gonna wait until you guys figure your shit out <laughs> yeah. before uh allowing you to come sit at this table here um and maybe there is elites that know about this and they're trying to be like all right well we need this new world order this government world government to like stop this uh nationality stuff we're all earthlings um can we just all stop and maybe just get under one umbrella. Uh, I don't believe that for a second, yeah. but no, but I think you know, that's it's out there that theory. Yeah. I mean, I think that really is though. The only way is for human beings. And I think this has been this way for a long time to get along with each other fully would be because there is a different race to hate that came from a different planet where you're like, Oh, we can all hate the green guys now yeah. so we can get along because I don't think human beings are capable of uh, just loving each other. I think I, I think that sucks. I disagree. But I, I, I disagree. I think it's true. I think it's the people in charge that that are maintaining that hatred. Of I course. Think most Th that's what I beings, mean. Right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. No, no, it's, it's on not, an individual. It's not the humans. Yeah. Sorry, right. Individually, ahead. most people want to just live a comfortable life yeah. uh, and have have a good good time. I mean, when you have the elites that are, or, or the, the people in control that are convincing the youth to hate uh, X group, whatever, sure. you know, you see it everywhere from uh, down Palestine, Israel uh, to the left versus the right in mm -hmm. America. Uh, I mean, Ireland, you know, with the, the immigrants versus the, the natives, I guess it's like it's everywhere. There's like this hatred that is is bred into the next generation so that these ideologues can have their army. 
right? To yeah. push whatever they want. Yeah, when you're, you're I, right. At baseline, right? Everyone just wants to live. Yeah, because That's I think shame. when you talk to most people, you realize you can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation yeah. with anybody. Exactly. But it's, yes. it's virtually impossible for like a mass of people to understand yes. you. Because like you said, there there's sort of this brainwash and this trickery to make mm -hmm. you believe whatever it is you believe. No, and I, I would agree with you. I think that, uh, that. Uh, to go back to, I think, human nature, you, you see a lot of the negative things in, in deliberately, deliberately, right? So you're, you're scrolling on social media and you see the negative stuff. It's doom scrolling. There's a term for it. Yep. Doom scrolling. You're scrolling and you're seeing negative, 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 negative. And the more things you interact that act with that are negative, you get more of that back. So then you go and you keep doing it and it just creates more engagement and it, like these these platforms, including X, they don't have to explain. They don't have the incentive to stop that because then if they stop that, that's less engagement, which is less engagement on their ads, on their platform. Right. People start going outside more. They stop using their platform less. They actually they so they actually have classes where they talk about how to make their platforms more addictive, which is not good. I know yeah. like, that is the opposite of what we want. We want them to be useful, not addictive, but that they yeah. want them to be addictive because so, they want them on there fighting with each other, left, right, Muslim, Christian, Jewish. We want them all fighting because that's more engagement across the board. Maybe everybody just needs to relax and take a nice sip of Fox <laughs> and Odin. Mm -hmm. They agree. need a little bit of that uh, that chef's puff, you know what I mean? Yeah. A little chef's puff. Adam, and, uh, chef puff. <laughs> Adam, I know that you're a whiskey what, what man. What is this? What is this here? What? Have you tried the Fox and Odin whiskey brand? No. What? Well, I have, I, I thought, and it's Weren't smooth. you supposed to get me a bottle before the show? So I, I can, was, but uh, I am lazy. You so, fell off, uh, dog. I, I have. So if you would like to try this uh, beautiful... Smooth whiskey. They also have a double barrel that's a little spicy. If you like the spicy, I like the smooth. Ooh. This is uh, like foxandodin.com. You can uh, put in the code normal and uh, get a little discount there. Angela, you Wait, enjoyed it, they, right? They oh, haven't that's sent a 30% you sheets. off. I definitely They haven't sent you sheets. It. They haven't sent you underwear, but no, they I gave did you get, some whiskey. I did get the sheets eventually. <laughs> Oh, good. Good for you. Eventually, I'm, I'm happy. He, he I'm, I had to happy. order my own underwear, but that's okay. Uh, they, they, <laughs> that's didn't, okay. they didn't send me the whiskey because they'd like to be a sponsor. Yes. Garrett did a good right. job on the promo tonight. <laughs> it's good that you drank the whiskey after the promo. Oh, yes. It was mm -hmm. definitely after. Mm -hmm. It wasn't during the show no. at any point. I didn't so, at all see Garrett drinking it in the bathroom no. right out mm -hmm. of the bottle. No, I did, I did not do that. <laughs> this, this bottle did not start at the top. And is now uh, halfway empty. So if you'd like to try it yourself, that is Fox and Odin whiskey. Mm. That is code normal. Don't you love the mouth? The mouth sounds. I did. Uh, Thirty percent no. off. There you go. <laughs> Free shipping on all orders. Get yourself a bottle. Come on. It's and support the, the show. They help. They help us. Okay. The holidays. It's the holidays. Look at look at all the the pine cones. Makes you feel festive. From pine trees. I want to try it. Yeah. Is it, it so? It's a bourbon. It is a bourbon, yes, it is. Mm. Let's get Adam a bottle. a bottle. Steve. No, we yeah. need. We should get you, you a bottle, my friend. You're a guest on our show. That. You deserve Thank that. You. Send you one. Thank you, guys. Awesome. I, I've, uh, you know, yeah, you're like I've a got, bit of a connoisseur. Uh, I, I, I am. So, for those who don't know, my uh, family line back in 1887. Mm started a whiskey company called Krigler and Krigler Whiskey. Oh, wow. And we sold we sold it to the government. Like the American government Lame. bought Krigler <laughs> and Krigler whiskey. Uh yeah, Cook. like US hospitals and stuff. <laughs> Had to get those uh, Indians out of the way yeah. somehow. <laughs> somehow. <I don't> know. <laughs> uh, did you did, your family was in the business? That's right. Or, I trust no? me, uh, I yeah. know. We <laughs> we were moonshiners, you see. Yeah. Ours wasn't as authentic. A lot of fires. So uh foxandodin.com slash normal. Go try it. Get your thirty percent off. Go. I come from a long Do line it. of melted people. <laughs> due, due to tub fires. <laughs> <laughs> but damn, was that moonshine good? Oh boy, oh, man, it was worth it. That'll put hair on your chest. Mm -hmm. It would also burn oh, it right. off if my uncle made it in a tub <laughs> in the woods of Kentucky. I actually had a relative mm -hmm. that shot a cop I, back what? in the moonshine moonshine days because he was he was uh, really? they were moonshining. In and he uh, wanted, Oklahoma, he, he didn't want to pay for it. And uh, the cop came up and was like, uh, he didn't know who he was. And he shot him. Wow. He got off because he was like, it's self-defense. I didn't know it was a cop. I thought it was just somebody coming out and robbing me. No, of course he got off. It worked. Wow. <laughs> it was a cop. They were like, well, there's nothing oh, yeah. a police officer would lie about. 
No. <laughs> was, it's pretty much everything up until right after the Rodney King verdict. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it worked. Wow. <laughs> until the 90s. Yeah, everything was fine. <laughs> Not fine. Worse. Yeah. And then we now have, mm-hmm. you know, people getting pulled over saying they can't walk a straight line because yeah. they're indigenous. <laughs> it's fair. And non-binary, uh, generational uh-huh. trauma. Yeah. I, there's so many. I, I lost track, Af- actually. Afraid of white fingers four feet away. <laughs> Nothing worse. You're intimidating me. This waggle of a finger. Put it away. If there was a bingo card, it would just that? be black. It yeah. would be a black square <laughs> yeah. for BLM. Just ding, 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 ding. <laughs> just every box. <laughs> yeah, every single one. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Do you want to get into this one? We might as well. We got a few minutes let's left, let's and we're going to talk about yeah. uh, little Nas X. Talking about social engineering. Oh, God. Yeah. And um, you thought, was it Uh-oh. you? Who oh, th- yes. I always thought little Nas was related to regular Nas <laughs> from the 90s. Yes, Illmatic, who's oh, one of uh-huh. the greatest rappers ever. And uh, That's that not the- accurate. He's oh. not related. Well, that's it's just different. a different name. Well, yeah. little Bow Wow is Snoop Dogg's nephew. And- I see what you're thinking. Is uh-huh. that... See, that's new information. That for is me. that is true. Oh. Lil ah, Romeo, of course, was uh, Master P's son. Right. Uh, they did was, a whole show. Yeah, but no, okay, not. So the little really actually means something the, in, the, in that uh, culture. It, the right. little does. So he learned something new every mean. day. Yeah, he thought it was Lil Nas X, but if you ever listen to Nas lyrics and that was his kid, there would be a lot of beatings in that house. <laughs> <laughs> that would not be accepted. Lord knows he needed it. <laughs> yes, I, I feel clearly. Oh, boy. <laughs> clearly, someone wasn't around to do what he should have done. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, a little Nas. He uh, he's on his Christian arc now. He, he now he's, is claims, oh, yeah. he's cl- claiming to be Christian because after what? you, what? Right? Yeah, no, you, he's not. Yeah. Wait, wait, so, hold on. Let me. I, I'm just checking my notes. This is the guy who who fucked the devil, right? That is correct. Okay. Correct. Yes. The, all right. All correct. Right. In the video. Sure. That's correct. Yeah. Apparently right. now he's Christian. Sure. I guess the devil didn't call him back after. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, this is where he's at now. He's also the guy who put his own blood into Nike shoes and started selling them. And oh, Nike yeah. was and like, then got sued. Yeah, because Nike was like, you can't just put blood into our shoes and call them Nas X and, and then Nike. resell them. <laughs> That's called, uh, yeah. we didn't approve Fraud. of you selling hepatitis shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Air, <laughs> oh man, Air Max Hebaglobins. <laughs> Air Max Satan Siemens. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, I like these. These are, these are gelling like a felon. Because <laughs> all the jizz. Yeah. All right, so. Wow. So his quote was, uh, y'all mind if I enter my Christian era? Father scratch my hands The lonely road seems to This is gonna get us uh, just banned We're gonna get a, a... Alright, cut it, cut it <laughs> The first thing Good n- The first goodness. thing he's doing he's The he's first like, thing he says is Father That's so what I know oh, Stop it, sir Father, you see, you see that instantly? It's like, yeah, yeah Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Nas is just trying Brian. to be outrageous. You know, that's Lil just Nas what he's trying X. to do. Oh, so, I'm sorry, Lil Nas. Yeah, Lil Nas. Nas sorry, listen, yes. I saw him last year with Wu Tang. Nas is one of the greatest rappers ever. He's got real talent. This man. Yeah, I don't Nas, know what I don't know what the hell this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the fuck was that? <laughs> I don't care. I don't trying care. to reinvent I'm himself. Christian now. Yeah. Didn't Dr. Dre have? Oh. Oh, no. oh, stop. So he's, stop oh, it. Please. Father he said, making my... Christian music doesn't mean I can't be on my knees. Father, scratch my bag. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> Father, stop tongue it. check my phone. Making Christian thought. music he wrote, okay, does not uh, mean I can't suck dick no more. I wait, that, this is a serious this post. This is his real, this is real one. This is real. Uh, this is real. His this tweet is, on X. This is no joke. <laughs> Making Christian music does not mean I can't suck dick no more. In fairness, though, that is a double negative, so he might be saying it means he can anymore. That's true. That's a little Ebonics <laughs> there. So, um, oh back my to the gosh. Tweet. Back to the tweet. Uh, the, sorry. <laughs> the, okay. Making Christian music does not mean I can't suck dick no more. Yep. The two are not mutually exclusive. Mm. I am allowed to get on my knees for multiple reasons. <laughs> He's just trolling. That's all he's doing. That means what, pray, praying, praying what and gay. What are the gayin'. multiple reasons? <laughs> praying no, and gay. Oh, praying and gay. <laughs> praying and gay. Yeah, one for the Lord, one for the. Uh... 
Oh, one for the shine box. Yeah. That is <laughs> old uh, love love tunnel. Where what was it that we said yesterday? Hole, right. I mean, yeah. the bonus hole. The yeah. Bonus hole trophy hole. So. Uh, oh my lord. I think I find it weird. Again, going back to the social engineering, this guy comes out with a, a song that's generally popular with everybody. Kind of a fun song. He literally went to like grade schools and sang it with kids, and then comes out lit, like the next song is him fucking the devil well, yeah <laughs> what the heck Can you, do we have a clip for that let's play the clip oh my god that's so loud that hurts my brain cowboy curtis It's gazing saddles. <laughs> That's a shitload of dimes. He's not talking about money. This is horrible. Why? Would, uh, well, that was fun. Hey, that was good times. He was having. He was singing the Old Town Road song. It was a good time. All right, as then, long as he's not up there being like. Okay, all right. this was before his. This was before the the demon uh, fucking. Yeah, the second. demon. Yeah, that's right, okay, yeah. And then he went and did that, and now he's on his uh, Christian grift. So, but he, but he also tweeted this though. He tweeted, "Y'all see everything I do." Uh, as a gimmick correct when in reality i'm just an artist expressing myself in different ways whether i'm a cowboy gay satanic or now just christian <laughs> <laughs> those are all gimmicks dude <laughs> y'all don't police nobody else art like mine y'all hate me because i'm fun cute and petite <laughs> yep. <laughs> so uh, that's exactly why i hate him yeah yep. you're like yeah. You, every time we bring a so little nas petite he's so, that I, hate him for it. I just what? hate him he's just so damn petite i like how he thinks he's the first artist ever he's like you don't uh, police nobody else it's just me also maybe you shouldn't call christianity a gimmick because people might find it inauthentic yeah maybe right <laughs> Oh, he's so yeah. stupid and petite. That's that's my hate. <laughs> that's why I his, don't like his, him. His manager, I don't think though, anyone said that. Cute ever. and petite, <laughs> except him. I'm so cute. Can you imagine getting a hate mail like that? I hate you so much <laughs> because you're all so fun, cute, and petite. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you were dead. I get that fun. comment all the time. Oh, all the time. They're always all like, the Dave. I don't know if it should be the fact you're cute or petite, but I just want I hate you them both. Dead. <laughs> Well, his manager, too, is um, his name is Adam Lieber, and he also has Miley Cyrus, who he turned huh? into a sex symbol, uh, Avril Lavigne, who we, of course, know was killed and replaced by a clone. Of course. Allegedly. Uh, Travis uh, Scott, demonic concerts. Mm -hmm. We've uh, seen that. Britney Spears, uh, who it says lost her mind. I, I don't know if I've ever seen evidence of that. Uh, Aerosmith, the weird demonic stuff with Steven Tyler. I don't know about uh, that, but I've he, not heard this one. He is slowly turning into Miss Cleo if you look at him. <laughs> <laughs> I see. He's it. gonna start a phone line. Just, He's really talented, Tyler. though. Yeah, he really is. Like I like Steven Tyler, but then yeah, you see him now, and he does. He looks like uh, a gypsy that sells turquoise jewelry at a fair. Zoltan. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like a uh, Captain Jack Sparrow. Yeah, like if he put a curse on you, you'd believe it. Yeah, you're like oh. Jack Sparrow's mother. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Jack Sparrow's lesbian mother. <laughs> yeah, exactly. she's like, look, I got some incense. Let's light some incense, okay? You want any herbal teas? It's Jackie Sparrow. <laughs> Just, <laughs> let me remove that curse from you. I got you. <laughs> Let's all hold hands. <laughs> and he was, and he also managed Diddy in the early two thousands, uh, who had sleepovers, I guess, with Usher's Usher and Justin Bieber. I guess we have a quick clip of that as well. It's a little dusty, but you know, come get the front shot. Man, Woo. Okay. Okay. All right, so so I'm gonna be driving this yeah, next yeah. year. Yeah, when you get sixteen, you come down and you gotta, you know. I mean, I'm 15. You could ride in the passenger He's giving a 15 year old. Oh, but I just spilled stuff in the passenger seat, so you're going to have to ride on my lap. Slow down. One step at a time. But yeah, yeah. Hop on over here. I'm going to give you this car, and I'm going to call you my little Salisbury steak. I hear your dad's not around. Is that true? Check this out, yo. Justin, he's in. You ever seen the movie 48 Hours? 
Right now, he's having 48 hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, Why? Has he been calling you racist things all day? Like, like, like the, you know, <laughs> where we Nick out, Nolte we character? Um, yeah. <laughs> we, we can't really disclose, but um, it's we can't disclose a 15 year old's dream. Um, you know, I, uh -oh. I, I have been Diddy. given custody of him. You know, so we signed look. to Usher. I'm signed to Usher. Uh, I, I had legal guardianship of Usher. When, Is that true? When, you know, he, he did his first I, album. I did yes. Usher's first album. I, I, I don't really... I, I don't guess. Have legal he had legal guardianship him, over Usher? Hours, I guess. I didn't me, know that. So, um, yeah, and Usher... So uncomfortable. Usher cool. found Usher found Bieber. And Usher has the herp dogs like a mofo. Oh, my God. Is that where you got it? Yeah. Usher, Usher. I went to a concert. It's like, look, you can meet him, but this is a two-way street. <laughs> you're, Usher. you're from now on. Your chewing is gonna hurt every six weeks. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> might be some sightly. But before we get to the end of this, lips. I do gotta say, uh, speaking of Hollywood, that's not creepy. Yeah. We think you should check out the movie The Blind. It's available right here. You can go to blazetv.com slash the blind. It's a wonderful movie. Heartwarming. Heartwarming tale of a blind man who becomes kind of a John Wick character. Mm -hmm. And he just takes out the trash one by one uh, before he creates uh, a duck dynasty. So eventually he gets sight. But from what I understand, it's a marvelous film, oh. uh, and uh, so I see highly, it's a great it's a great movie. So please check out uh, blazetv.com slash the blind. But honestly, check it out. It's the true story about the Robertson family. It's now available. Give it a watch. You're gonna enjoy it, and it does something where you know it 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 takes the money away from everybody in Hollywood who buys 15-year-old children $300,000 Lambos they yeah. get a DUI in four days later. So this <laughs> one is about Phil Robertson, of course. Please check it out. Give it a whirl. I think you're going to enjoy it, and it's a family-friendly film. BlazeTV.com slash The Blind. There you go. Is it time? It's time, man. I'm hearing it. So I got to say, well, thank you, Adam, for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. I've been watching the show for since since you guys started it. I, I love it. It's it's fantastic. I catch it uh, as soon as I uh, I've been waking up really early. So uh, I'm Sweet. like se seven and a half hours or seven hours ahead of you guys. So oh, wow. uh, I watch it during the day now. Uh, I used to watch it at night, but I've switched up my schedule. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a pleasure. I I can't wait to come out and join you guys in studio Heck and bring yeah. one of my guitars. I know you guys got a little stage there. You know, flawed performed the first day that was awesome That's to right. see i would so love I it wanna... if you performed here yeah yeah it'd be great i can't wait yeah i want to and where else can we find you well i've got a channel on rumble and youtube because youtube for those who don't know uh i have 13 strikes on my youtube channel uh still going still there but i'm quite controversial medical misinformation election misinformation yeah. you know all that good stuff yeah, but truth. i'm on rumble as well Truth, exactly. Right. <laughs> uh, at, it's the Krigler Show. Really easy, just the Krigler Show, uh, and or it's Adam Krigler everywhere else. Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, Sunday nights, Forbidden Frontier on you. Nerdrotic Live with uh, Garrett. It's awesome. Have a great time over there. And then Bay Staff Monday right. on uh, my channel. Just come check us out. Yeah, thanks, thanks man. Very cool, thank you. And before we get to the end of the world, did you just kind of do your plucks? Ah, basically. Hey, uh, Friday, night Friday night sites Nights. tomorrow on the Nerdrotic channel. Also on Nerdrotic Live, it's the second channel. We do the Forbidden Frontier with Adam and uh, X Ray Girl and Gary from Nerdrotic on that show. And then Base Staff Monday on Mondays with Adam and the crew. If you like flawed, you got to come watch it. Oh yeah. And this this weekend, I will be in Syracuse, New York at the Funny Bone. Uh, then next week, I'll be in Indianapolis and Hobart, Indiana. After that, Virginia Beach, Funny Bone in Virginia Beach. And then New Year's Eve, we come out Huntsville, Alabama to the uh, Stand Up Live. Matt McClary will be joining me on all these adventures. Yeah. And you can get tickets at DaveLandau.com. Uh, not technically tickets for me, but if you click the link, it'll bring you to their page. And then that'll, you know, oh. help you out. Angela, where are you going to be? Well, I'm currently bleeding from the waist down, ah. so I'm going to have to remedy that after okay. the show. Nice. I'm glad to hear that you're... Are you still cycling? I mean, uh, the bike. Uh, well, actually, you have my bike, and I need it back. No. Why? Well, All right. Yeah. You're not getting it? <laughs> All right. No. Well, All right. then I'm not cycling. Welcome to the end of the world. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> 
After last night's debate, I feel that Trump would pick a candidate and oh. give them a nickname. I would like you to pick a candidate and give them the nickname that you think Trump would give them. Oh, man. QB. Uh, uh, Nikki Haley. Stacy's mom. Ah, I like it. Because I can see him thinking that she's got it going on. I, can, I like it. In a funny way. Really? I know. Yeah. Uh, like a slide way. Angela? Well, I'd go with Chris Christie. Crispy Cream. Uh, it was Christy Cream. Love hanging Christy Cream. Christy Cream. Dang. <laughs> I'm fired. <laughs> You're fired, Mangela. Get the fuck out of here. Wow. Yeah, oh, Mangela, I swear. Back when you, you were just better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still good looking. Seriously. Go. Super cool. Yeah, it's it's a perspective super thing. Cool. Go get your tits and sassy attitude back. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Dark sense of humor. <laughs> Well, I do have one of those Steve Urkel machines where I can swap back and forth. Oh, like a personality machine? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right oh, now I'm cool. set to Stefan. Oh, nice. I, did. I hated Stefan. I think the machine is broken. <laughs> Stefan can screw hey. off, man. Hey. <laughs> I think you're just going in your washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> is it working? <laughs> Am I cool yet? <laughs> Adam, what about you? Ron DeSantis. Ooh. Puss in boots. I like it. <laughs> it's simple. <laughs> yeah. Huh? That's good. No? <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like it. And I, I'm going to say, I'm going to go with Vivek, and I'm not going to try, try to pronounce his last name. Okay. Uh, but I'm going to go with Mahatma Yondi. <laughs> okay. Because he's a real oh. bore. Ooh. I didn't watch the debates. You watched the debates. Uh... I was he was more spicy than the other ones. I'll be honest. That's more just a. Joke. Well, the other ones are like mild as hell. So. Well, yeah, and Chris Christie, like he said, is just leaning on. Oh, oof, just uh, you know you're going to be on camera, right, Chris? I just think like he should like if it was a Speaking hot dog a eating contest, mm. he should win. <laughs> but he just is too lazy that in the amount of time it would take him, he wouldn't win. Uh, Did you see him yelling at the the hosts? Oh yeah. What? In, in, in between, yeah, in between the segments, he like walked up and was like yelling at the host. Chris, oh yeah. Chris, you ain't got that kind of pull, dude. He <laughs> don't settle well, down. Both the hosts were you, just like, you stop put, it. Stop you put it. carrots in the green room. Mm. Yeah. That's, I had to I eat asked carrots. for pastries. <laughs> pastries. If, I asked for Krispy creams. All right. If there are vegetables anywhere near me, there's hell to pay. The flip. <laughs> yeah. What, what what is this? What is this? Tomatoes? There wasn't even blue cheese dressing. No, I've never even had a tomato. How am I going to get my calories in? <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, we will see you next week see you next on Tuesday. Tuesday. Thank you very much, and bye bye.